Shalom and good evening to you all. We thank God for another opportunity to share His Word tonight. And I believe that your life will never be the same, even as you listen to the Word of God tonight. We want to thank our senior pastor, Reverend Yawofori of Better Baptist Church, and the entire pastoral team for God's grace and um, for God's protection of our lives. And we knew that God has a plan and a purpose for us during this COVID. I know that things have not been so easy for us during this COVID period, but even as we trust in God, even as we hold on to the power and the grace of God, I know that many lives will be saved. And I know that God will touch many lives during this COVID period. This COVID period has been very challenging to many people, and I know it is in God's plan that we should experience this. And this is a period where a great revival is going to happen in the entire Christian family. This is a time where the power of God is going to be manifested in the life of so many people. And so tonight, we want to come before God again in prayer, and we are trusting that many lives, many lives will be saved in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. And we know that your power and your grace is sufficient for us. Your word, O Lord, is enough to set us free from the power of sin and the power of death. Tonight we pray that your will be established over our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Brethren, tonight I'm going to share a very important message. A message that God has called me to share to you tonight. And it's and it's a message that will transform your life. And I believe that many people will have to listen to this message. The power of God to turn their lives around. And many people will be saved through this message. Brethren, tonight I'm talking about a life without Jesus Christ. A life without Jesus Christ is an empty life. A life of condemnation. A life of damnation. A life that will not send you anywhere. Life outside Jesus Christ is no life at all. No matter where you have reached in life, your academic qualifications, your credentials, whatever you obtain in life, your properties uh, you have acquired, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, I am God has sent me to come and tell you that you have no life at all. A life without Jesus Christ is a life not worth living. Outside Christ is a life that is wasted, a life that is headed to eternal damnation. When I look at what is happening currently, sometimes I became so, so afraid. Look at what is happening. All over the world, Many people have rejected our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many people, you know, have turned away from Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. Let's start from the verse 4. It says that, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. There's a spirit of the Antichrist that has blinded the minds of many people so that the gospel of Jesus that has been preached will not reach many, so that many people will not come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus. The five, verse 5 says that, For what we have preached is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God said, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. May his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Brethren, I don't, I don't care whatever, whatever you have done in life, whatever you have reached in life. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you have no life at all. You have no life at all. A time will come where money will fail. A time will come where everything that we see currently in this our present dispensation will fail. And what will keep you going is a life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Many people have rejected Jesus Christ. You know, if you watch the Facebook, the Murray show, sometimes people come on the show, they try to t test the, patern the paternity of their kids. A lady will come, he will bring about four or five people. She doesn't even know who is the father of her kids. Now, if, if you are transgender, people like you, okay? People, people tell you to be different. Somebody can say, I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm a woman. And so the person goes for his, his gender to be changed. 
And when you talk, you cannot even when you go to Europe and other places now, you cannot if you are working as a as a, a nurse or a doctor or any of any of this uh, medical institutions, you cannot even witness your faith and tell people about Jesus Christ. The world have rejected Jesus Christ, the one who was, who died on the cross for us to be saved. The world has rejected Jesus Christ. Bible says in First Corinthians chapter says verse nine to ten. It says that, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor greedy or drunkards, or slanderers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. None of these people will inherit the kingdom of God. Anytime we reject Jesus Christ and we decide to live our life, the life of our own, there is no life. It is not life. No matter how long you live in this world, a time will come where your spirit, your physical body will give up, where your spirit will give up, and you will you'll be accountable to God for the life that you lived here on earth. That is why Apostle John said that no one is born of God, no one who is born of God will continue to live in sin. Because God's seed remain in him, and they cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Anybody who is born of God cannot continue to live in sin. If, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, anybody who's, who has the seed of God in him will not entertain transgender, will not entertain lying, will not entertain insults, will not entertain slanderers, will not entertain idolatry, will not entertain fornication, will not entertain corruption will not entertain anything that draws us away from the kingdom of God and the life that Jesus Christ produces. Tonight, God has called me to come to tell you that a life without Jesus is no life at all. Wherever you are listening to this message, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, this is a time that God is calling you. There is no second chance. I tried to look up the number of religions in the world and it will shock you. A research was conducted by one, one Professor Stephen Joan. He's an anthropologist at the University of Sydney. And then he tried to research on the religions of the world. And he said that there are about 6,800 spoken languages throughout the whole world. Out of these languages, there are about 4,300 4, religions. 4,300 religions in this world. And according to his study, he, he defined religions to include churches, denominations, congregations, religious bodies, faith groups, tribes, cultures, and movements. And he found out that there are about 4,300 religions out of the 6,800 languages of this world. And then he went on further to say that out, out of the research, nearly 75% of the world's population practice about five main religions. He spoke about Buddhism, he spoke about Christianity, he spoke about Hinduism, he spoke about Islam, he spoke about Judaism. But I'm here to tell you that there is no name given under heaven by which men may be saved, but the name of, of Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross of Calvary. He said that there are about 2.5 billion Christians in this world. He said there are about 1.3 billion Islam. Those who are saying they are atheists are about 1.1 billion. The Hindus are about 900 million. The Chinese traditional religion about 394 million. He said that the Buddhists are about 376 million. Primal indig in indigenous rel religions about 300 million. African traditional and diasporic religions about 100 million. Sikhism about 23 million. Spiritism about 15 million. Brethren, I'm telling you, all those isms will not give you life. What can give you life is, this, is the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 that salvation is found in no one else for there is no name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Salvation is found only in the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for you and I. Hallelujah. Brethren, Christianity is not a religion. It is a living relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who is, who is alive, hallelujah. He died and he was resurrected. We are not serving a dead God. We are not serving a tree. We are not serving a, a, a God who is not alive. Bishop Dab gave an, an example that they went for a religion, a, a conference and a place, and, you know, some some group of guys were, you know, were hard-pressed. They went to, to urinate, and then 
they were urinating on a certain rock and then you know the people rushed and said that hey why are you <laughs> why are you urinating on our god why are you urinating on our god why didn't the god the god fight for himself why didn't the god fight himself look i'm here to tell you that jesus is alive jesus is the only way by which man can be reconciled back to god there's no other name both made in heaven and earth that man can be saved except the name of jesus christ who died on the cross of calvary for you and i bible says in john chapter 11 verse 25 to 26 it says that jesus said to her i am the resurrection i am the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die jesus is the lord god almighty he's the only one by which man can be reconciled back to god hallelujah Bible says that he was buried and he was raised from the dead. Bible says on the third day after his death, he resurrected from the grave. He conquered death, for death could not hold him captive. He's the living God who is alive. He's the only one by which man can be saved and be, and be reconciled back to God. Hallelujah. No one can compare him. No dead God can compare him. No God from the Buddhist, from the Chinese, from the Spiritism, for Judaism, there is no God that can save you but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for you and I. Bible says in, in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 16, it said that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. For, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him brethren there is no way you can get salvation for your soul but the name of jesus christ the one who created all things bible said all things were created for him and by him whether they be thrones what whether they be dominions visible and invisible all things were made through him hallelujah but wherever you are god has sent me to tell you that you need jesus you need Jesus in your life. Look, a time will come where money will fail. A time will come where health systems will fail. A time will come where marriage will fail. A time will come where businesses will fail. A time will come where economies will break down. But those who have put their, their trust in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, they will never fail. The Bible says, even though they die, yet they shall live because there's life after death. And that life is contained in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says that we have to be watchful. We have to be watchful. We have to be on our guard. Because life does not consist in abundance of possessions. When you re read Luke chapter 12 verse 15, Bible says that be, be watchful, be on your guard against all forms of greed. For life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Today, if you are not rich, nobody respects you. If you are not driving in expensive cars, nobody respects you. If, if you don't have money, you are not respected but bible is telling us that look stop chasing after money and chase after your soul chase after jesus christ bible says that if you seek god first all other things you need in life will become will come back to you a time will come that people can no longer argue with god all those who have been arguing with god all those who have been insulting jesus all those who have been insulting our pastors all those who have been fighting the gospel of truth bible is saying that a time will come a time will come. Nobody will have the capacity to challenge our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nobody will have the capacity to reject the gospel. And those who have rejected the gospel, there's no second chance. This is the time and season for you to come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this example. Bishop Duck said one time that he, he was at a, a golf course to play golf. And he met a certain rich and influential man. And he told him, the man, please sir, can you accept Jesus Christ? You need Jesus Christ in your life. And the man was so angry. The man was so angry with him. I started shouting. So Bishop started apologizing to the man. And the man said that, for me, I don't accept apologies like that. I don't take that nonsense. Do you think you are better than me? For me, if people offend me, I beat them. So Bishop tried to apologize to the man. And the man was so angry and shouting. Everybody was looking at them. And Bishop said he kept quiet. A few weeks later, he went to the golf course. And then he had a message that the man who, who insulted him had fallen sick and was at a point of death in the hospital. 
and was calling Bishop to come and pray for his soul. This was a very, this was a very rich man, an influential man in the Ghanaian society. And before Bishop could make up, make up his mind to go back and pray for him, the man died. And there are reports in the hospital that the man was afraid of death. You could see that evil spirits were pursuing the man. Look, don't reject Jesus Christ. Don't reject the gospel. Jesus Christ will save you if you give your life to him. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, that for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive his due for the things done in his body, whether good or bad. No matter who you are, no matter where you have gotten to in life, you will come before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account to God. Whatever you have done with the gifts that God has given you, the privileges that God has given you in this life, the position that you find yourself, the Bible says a time will come, you come before the judgment seat of Christ and you give an account to God for the things that you have done with your body. But the important thing is Jesus is calling up to you. The Bible says in John 3, saying that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son to condemn the world, but he saved the world through him. Brother, Jesus loves you so much. That is why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for you. It does not matter whatever you have done, whatever you have done, whatever wrong you have done, Jesus loves you. That is why he came. He came to die on the cross, not to condemn you, but to give you a second chance. Tonight is your night of repentance. Tonight is your night for a second chance. Bible says that whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him stands already condemned because they have not believed in the name of God's only one and only son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Brethren, Jesus loves you so much. That is why he came. He came for you and I. He came to die on the cross. And he's saying that, look, accept me. Accept my love. Accept my free gift of love so that you have eternal life. This is a verdict. The light has come into the world, but people still love darkness instead of the light that God has given. Bible says that for everyone who does evil, hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth that comes through the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God who have eternal life. Brethren, let me tell you something. The good news is that no one loves you more than Jesus Christ. Okay? Look at the 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 the, the, the people who have died. You know, this Kumawood guy who has died, now he was rejecting the the, the, the the movie industry and was calling out for Jesus. Look, when you look throughout the Bible, you have you will find out that even though God expresses his love towards you and I. Jesus talks about hell and judgment more than anyone else in the Bible. Hallelujah. When you read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, he tells us, For it is appointed to man to die once and after death judgment. Look, you can receive the applause of men. People can tell you uh, and, 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 and you can receive awards. Okay? The, the order of the voter, people can, 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 can tell you a whole lot of stuff and make you feel proud. People are proud to, to, to be gay. People are proud to be lesbians. People are proud. Now, you cannot even talk about sin. When you talk about sin, people will leave your church. We don't want the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth is what will set you free. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 20, He says that enter through. These are Jesus' own words. He says that enter through the narrow gate. It seems right to man, but I'm telling you, it will lead to your death and your eternal separation from God. Jesus said that for the for the, for why is is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many people will enter through. These are Jesus' own words. But small is the gate and then and the, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few will find it. Hallelujah. Jesus warns, warned us that let us watch out for the false prophets. Now look at the various revelations on social media. People, there are people who are involved in occult, and they are saying that they are pastors. Occult, occultism. They are killing people and burying people in their churches, and they call themselves pastors. People are running for prophecies. People are running for for, for money. We have turned the church into business fields. 
We preach about finances. We preach about marriage. We preach about relationships. But we, we forget to preach about salvation. We forget to preach about the gospel. That Jesus Christ came and he died for you and I. That we may be reconciled back to God. That anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be saved. Jesus is calling the church to repentance. Jesus said that there will be false prophets. And Bible says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Jesus said that many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, we, we did prophesy in your name. And in your name did we drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then Jesus will turn them, turn them praying. I never knew you go away, you evil doer. Brother, a time will come, there will be no, there will be no second chance. God, God, Jesus Christ encourages us that let us test every spirit. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. There are so many familiar spirits. People will go to pastors and they will tell them, and this fake prophets, and they will tell them about you know their family and then look there are familiar spirits that the devil can place in your life Monet monetary spirits they will tell you the food you ate they will tell you that the, the things you did today and they can sometimes even predict your future but they cannot tell you your destiny they will, they will, they will destroy your soul and they will destroy your life that is why God told that test every spirit with the word of God brethren you cannot continue to reject Jesus Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse Verse 16 that he who hears me, he who hears you, hears me. He who rejects, he who rejects you also rejects me. And he who rejects me, him also, my father will reject. Brethren, if you reject this message of, of grace, this message of salvation, you are not you are, you are not rejecting me, you are rejecting Jesus Christ. A day will come, Jesus will also reject you. Bible says in John chapter 12, verse 48. And he who and he who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. A day will come where God will play back this message to you. That you rejected an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior so that you'll be saved. Bible says in John and Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. This is a time to show that you're a Christian in your office. This is a time to suffer with Jesus Christ. This is a time to boldly say that I am standing for the Lord in the midst of this COVID, in the midst of these challenges. This is a time to stand for the Lord. I'm telling you, rejecting Jesus Christ is more dangerous than COVID-19. I'm telling you, there's going to be a time, there will not be an opportunity for you to be saved again. There will not be an opportunity for you to be saved. The apostle said, Apostle Paul said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, that if we, if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sins. Look, if you continue sinning, a time will come, there will no longer be a, a, a sacrifice for your sin because you have known the, the truth. Jesus Christ has, has, has paid for your sins. Yours is accepting. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, so that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in you. Brother, you cannot work for salvation. It's a free gift. It's a free gift for you. Salvation is a free gift for you. Yours is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I'm telling you, you'll be saved. Hallelujah. Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 36, that, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Hallelujah. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ, whoever believes in Jesus Christ has eternal life. But whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God will continue to remain upon them. Look, the wrath of God is more dangerous than any, any pestilence or, 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 or any kind of disease. Brethren, this is an opportunity for you. Bible says in John chapter 1, verses 12 to 8, and I love it so much. Bible says that, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, no human decision, or husbands were but born of God. Bible says that the word of God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Bible says that we have seen his glory, 
and the glory of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Full of grace and full of truth. You can only receive grace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he, has, he was he was before me. Bible says that from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. From his fullness, we have all received grace after grace. Bible says that for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the beginning. Jesus is the life. If you have no Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life, you have no life. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time for you to to allow Jesus Christ to come into your life. Brethren, don't don't follow the world. Don't don't follow what people are saying. Don't follow your friends. Don't follow, you know, this Illuminati people who try who and look at what is happening. And look at the gospel gospel music that is being is being played. But they are not making money. But if Obia Bonyum Fumbia, they, they push money into the person. They call this slave queens, they they call them they 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 they, 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 they call them celebrities. They call them celebrities. And they and they have no power to give life. Michael Jackson was a celebrity, but Michael Jackson had no power to give anybody life. Salvation comes in the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation is all in Jesus Christ. You must give your life to Jesus. Bible says that for all of all of us have sinned. And we have fought short of the glory of God. Bible says that for the wages of sin is death. But the free, God, free gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus our Lord. Bible says that we have redemption through Jesus. Through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. According to the riches of his grace. Bible says, For our sake, he who knew no sin became sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Bible says that he himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. Not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. This is the time to accept Jesus Christ. Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many people. This is the time to accept Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is the time, is the time for you be, to be saved. The Bible says that for with your heart you believe and are justified, and with your mouth you confess and are saved. Therefore, anyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father in heaven. God is willing. God is calling us for us to stand in the gap and pray for the world and pray for souls and pray for believers. God is calling us to stand in the gap and, and, and pray for the souls and stand in for the souls. The Bible says that he paid for the debt. He paid for our sins. The Bible says in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and to live in righteousness. Bible says that for by his wounds you have been healed. Bible says that for you were in First Corinthians chapter six verse twenty, that for you were bought with a price. For you were bought with a price. But you were bought with the blood of Jesus. So you must glorify God in your body. You must glorify God in your body. Bible says that when you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. You have been bought with a price. You were bought with a price. Do not become a slave of men. Do not become a slave of worldly music. Do not become a slave of money. Do not become a slave of your friends. Listen to the voice of God tonight and rededicate your life and give your life to Christ. Tonight is a night of repentance. The Bible says that in, first, in Timothy chapter 2 verse 14, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Bible says in Romans chapter 5, they say that, that but God shows his love for us, that whilst we were yet sinners, whilst we remained in our sin, Christ died for us. 
Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 5 that he, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement of our peace. And by his stripes we were healed. Who can die for his son? Who can die for his friend? But he came to die for us. He was God. But he chose to come and love us. Bible says in, in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18. He said that he said to them, God gave us his command. You and I, we have a role to play. He said that we should go into the whole world and preach the gospel to all creation. Bible says that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And Bible says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. Jesus said that in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. The Bible says that they will place their hands on the sick people and they will be saved. The Bible says that and they will get well. Jesus, these are the words of Jesus himself. After the Bible says that after he has spoken these words, the Bible says that he was taken up to heaven. I don't know wherever you are now, but we can no longer live as Gentiles. Pastor said it in the morning. That we cannot we can no longer live in the futility of our minds, in the futility of the thinking of this world. But we must give our life to Jesus. We must spread the gospel of Jesus. We must pray for souls. We must pray for souls and spread the gospel of Jesus. Because many people are dying without Jesus. Many people are dying without Jesus. This is a time to stand in the gap. This, are, this is a time to stand in the gap. This is a time to stand in the gap. I'm bringing my message to an end. And wherever you are, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. I thank you for opportunity to listen to your word. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus, come into my life, Lord. Come into my life. Come into my life and save me, Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. I accept you. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Lord, if there's anyone also, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Go back to the basics. Go back to the word and prayer and in relationship with Jesus. That is what will set you free. At this time, I want to pray for people wherever you are sick. As a, as a testimony to the word of God, Wherever you are sick, I want you to place your hands there. And I want to pray in the name of Jesus, every infirmity in your body, I command you to live right now in the name of Jesus. Every migraine, blood, continuous flow of blood, barrenness, diabetes, cancer, stroke, every form of infirmity. That is destroying your body tonight as an evidence to God's word. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus and I speak life to your body in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. Wherever you are, continue to pray. Continue to pray for, for, for the church. Continue to pray for the body of Christ. Continue to pray for Better Baptist Church. And I know that your life will never be the same. We thank, we thank Jesus Christ so much tonight. And we give glory to God for the opportunity to share His word in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and God bless you wherever you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oh, mm-hmm. 